For decades, Mars has been a huge object of interest among astronomers. Its red, dusty appearance and dim glow in the night sky is always quick to attract engineers and scientists to its case. Humans have been unlocking Mars' secrets since the dawn of time. Even ancient peoples conjured up fabulous stories about the red planet, some claiming it was where the god of war lived, others believing its appearance at night was a grave warning. Only in the past century have we been able to use cutting-edge technology to uncover some of the astonishing details and really discover what Mars is. Since the 70s, we have sent various orbiters and landers to Mars. Four of these were rovers, and one rover, Curiosity, is still active and roving about on Mars' surface. NASA and her contractors' experience in building rovers that can perform effectively on Mars is the culmination of many, many years of design and experimentation. Through tours of the red planet from its surface, we've gathered a wealth of extremely valuable data. But as we all know, to get the full sense of something, you can't just look at it from one angle. You have to assume multiple perspectives. NASA has clearly taken this advice to heart and is now attempting to view the Martian surface in a completely unprecedented way, from the air. I'm sure most of you have probably heard of Mars's new and advanced Perseverance rover, which is slated for a touchdown on Mars's Jezero crater by February 18th this year. But Perseverance is carrying a little extra bundle of science on its journey to Mars. Meet Ingenuity. This is the unique little helicopter that NASA plans to fly around Mars, February this year. Ingenuity is quite something. Although it is remarkably small as far as spacecraft go, it is absolutely jam-packed with technological features and science that'll give us a whole new understanding of Mars. Mars has never been viewed from low altitude like this before. Cruising above the Martian surface will give us a fantastic idea of what the planet's terrain looks like. Many of the orbiter cameras we have flying around Mars don't have high enough resolution and zoom to capture the intricate details of the red planet's terrain. We need this information to plan future rover missions, find good landing places, and learn about how we could build colonies on Mars's plains and basins. Ingenuity will also fly around interesting targets to gather information about the Jezero Basin, which, in conjunction with Perseverance's data from the ground, could provide information about whether there was liquid water on Mars sometime in its past, and even if it could have hosted extraterrestrial life. NASA's JPL has been wanting to deploy some kind of aerial vehicle, like a helicopter, on Mars since at least 2014. Over the past five or so years, $80 million has been spent on engineering ingenuity for its mission with the Mars 2020 rover. So, let's take a look at the base specs and design of the Mars helicopter and get a sense of what it's made of. Here we have Ingenuity, the Mars helicopter that'll hopefully be doing some amazing aerial reconnaissance in the next few weeks. It's 49 centimeters tall and weighs just about 1.8 kilograms. As far as space rovers and helicopters go, this is very light, meaning that it won't be a huge loss if the helicopter fails. It barely occupies any payload space and just hugs the belly of Perseverance during descent to the Martian surface. Let's break the helicopter down into parts we can understand. Here at the top are the rotors. These are made of flexible, light carbon fiber for high durability and performance. Their low mass is important because Mars's atmosphere is so thin that generating lift is extremely difficult and any extra unnecessary weight massively decreases the helicopter's chances of actually flying. Because of the air pressure on Mars is only 0.6% of that on Earth, the rotors have to be spinning incredibly fast to produce the lift that'll keep ingenuity in the air. They rotate at about 2,400 RPM, significantly faster than typical chopper rotors. In length, they measure just over a meter each, and the two pairs are contra-rotating. Moving down to Ingenuity's communication system, we have several antennas connected outside the flight computer compartment. Ingenuity communicates data across an ultra-high frequency, or UHF, radio band, connecting stations on Earth by routing its transmissions through satellites in Mars and Earth's orbit. 
If you want to send commands to a rover on Mars, you'll have to wait anywhere from 5 to 25 minutes for the data to be sent through space at the speed of light and relay down to the surface. Ergo, there will probably be a delay of about half an hour to send communications to the helicopter and get confirmation that they are being carried out. There are antennas hidden beneath the solar unit on the top of the helicopter. To get signals back to Earth, the helicopter will first use antennas to transmit any data to the Perseverance rover. From there, it is bounced into an orbit to a Mars satellite, and then onwards to Earth. Then, we have the core of the helicopter, containing many of the craft's sensors, several batteries, and of course, the flight computer that'll coordinate the mission. Because of the substantial communication delay between the Mars helicopter and operators on Earth, the craft needs its own brain to keep itself moving in the air, without depending on direct instructions. Thanks to that 30 minute waiting time, we won't be able to control the copter in real time, but we can create paths and waypoints for it to follow in advance, and then send them over so the craft can get started as soon as it receives new information. Ingenuity's flight computer is packed with electronics to control the sensors and rotors of the craft, allowing it to sense its surroundings, interpret the data, and move to the destinations properly. To keep the computer booted up, the Mars helicopter is kitted out with some internal batteries for keeping the lights on. Six high-capacity lithium-potassium batteries are locked inside the main unit, with connections to the rotors. The Mars helicopter will need to withstand some pretty intense temperatures on the red planet, where the thin atmosphere can frequently drop to negative 100 degrees Celsius. Frigid conditions can damage the electronics on board the helicopter and decrease its chances of operating properly for very long. So, the craft is equipped with an electronic heating system that'll keep the flight computer warm. Additionally, the main unit is surrounded by a layer of aerogel insulation for added protection from the biting cold. If we move right back up the body of the helicopter again, we can see that there is a circular solar panel attached above the rotors which feeds a varying current depending on sunlight levels into the power and control unit. Because Ingenuity is only carrying 35% charge on its way to Mars, it'll need a way to keep itself charged so it can operate for as many days as possible. Mars isn't the most brightly lit place, so the helicopter will touch down at night and wait until the morning to fly to conserve charge. Then of course, we can move onto the sensors, which will guide the copter in flight and give it some important details about what it's flying above. Naturally, Ingenuity has been equipped with accelerometers and gyroscopes. Those will tell the flight computer and operators on Earth how fast the craft is moving and what its rotational position looks like. There's also a laser altimeter in there, which will bounce high-energy electromagnetic radiation off the surface of Mars to estimate the height of the vehicle. But these aren't the only sensors the helicopter is equipped with. Ingenuity also has two cameras for navigation and snapping pictures of its environment. The first is panchromatic and will be shooting images predominantly in black and white. And it points directly downwards towards the nadir. That is the point right underneath the helicopter when it's in flight. Then there's the return to earth camera, which is really just a high res color camera pointing in a more forward direction so it can capture everything from the nadir to the horizon. The navigation camera will give us a visual sense of where the helicopter is, whilst providing details about the contours and paths of the terrain, which could be handy for planning future rover routes. Obviously, the second camera is primarily for getting real, colorful images of Mars from the air and informing us about the terrain down there. Finally, we have the four landing legs attached to the bottom of the Mars helicopter. Ingenuity will use these to land if it needs to inspect a particular site from the ground. Also, if it has a malfunction in the air and drops to the ground, it's better if it lands properly upright so it is not damaged and remote technicians can diagnose the problems, hopefully getting Ingenuity flying again. And at night, the craft will land and wait until sunlight levels rise again so it can continue changing its batteries. Like the rotors, the legs are made of carbon fiber. When the Mars helicopter flies alone above the Martian surface for the first time, all of these elements will be working in harmony to keep it in the air and feed crucial information back to NASA. 
However, let's see how the helicopter will get to Mars in the first place. Perseverance is going to touch down on Mars' surface in an incredibly unique way, much different from previous rover descent systems. Once the carrier module containing the back shell and heat shield in the display configuration has passed through Mars' thin atmosphere and is approaching the surface, Perseverance will be lowered onto the surface by a hovering craft. Mars Sky Crane will basically host the craft through the air while remaining afloat thanks to propulsion from eight engines on its sides. Once the craft has descended close enough to the surface, the Sky Crane will detach from its three tethers from Perseverance, dropping it onto the ground at a descent speed of about 1.7 miles per hour. The impact of the collision will be spread across the Perseverance's six flexible wheels. Meanwhile, Ingenuity will cling to the bottom of the Perseverance rover in a folded-up configuration before deployment. During its descent to the surface, it'll depend on Perseverance's systems for power-up until it is released from the rover and can fly freely. Before the launch in July last year, the engineers spent many hours hooking up the helicopter up to the Perseverance computer so it could access electrical power and flight information during its journey. You could see where Ingenuity is supposed to hook up Perseverance here. When Ingenuity detaches from the Perseverance rover and enters flight in Mars's thin atmosphere, it will give us a stunning view of the massive Jezero Crater, a 45-kilometer wide basin that is believed to have once been filled by a large body of water. A significant river delta probably contributed to this lake at one point, providing the ground with soft soils and clays, and conditions favorable to primitive life forms. So far, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, a craft that is flying around Mars from in space, has gathered enough data about the crater to suggest that there are fine mineral deposits on the lake bed, and that it was probably formed by an ancient asteroid impact. But we won't know for sure until we get a good view of the Jezero Crater close up. And for that, we need reconnaissance both on the ground and in low altitude flight. While Perseverance surveys the ground, performs surface experiments, and collects soil samples, Ingenuity will fly across the basin, getting a great idea of the terrain features and ground appearance. If Perseverance is to provide valuable data, it needs to know exactly what it's looking at. The Mars helicopter will scan square miles of the Jezero surface, where Perseverance is experimenting to consolidate the information. Scientists on Earth will compare all the data they receive from Perseverance and Ingenuity to information about certain lake beds and mineral deposits on Earth's surface. This will help us uncover the secrets of Mars geology and history. But the Mars helicopter won't just unlock brilliant scientific information in partnership with Perseverance. It will also pave the way for future aerial Martian technology giving us the confirmation that we can build helicopters and transport payloads from site to site. On its mission, Ingenuity will perform five pre-trained flights. If all are successful, operators on Earth will be able to plan new flights and communicate them to Ingenuity. The Mars helicopter will then carry out these commands one by one, using its advanced onboard flight systems to avoid terrain, move between waypoints, and head to each destination. This is a demonstration of cutting-edge technology more than anything else. From there, NASA and other space agencies will have the knowledge to design both bigger and smaller helicopters, and cover huge swaths of Mars terrain up close, something no orbiter can do without an insanely powerful camera. Not to mention that if NASA proves a helicopter can be safely operated on Mars, then we can also probably equip future crafts with robotic tools for acquiring soil samples and carrying them back to collection points. For example, a Mars helicopter could visit five different sites and bring back samples to an on-ground rover, or some micro-launch system which can shoot the package into orbit for relay to Earth via a large module. We're fingers crossed for a successful landing of Perseverance on Mars on the 18th of February, with the Mars helicopter Ingenuity tucked away beneath it. If Ingenuity gets up in the air and functions properly, maybe we'll get to see Mars in an entirely new and beautiful way. I hope you enjoyed this video by 26 Dimensions, the space exploration and astrophysics channel here on YouTube. If you did, please consider hitting subscribe. I put an insane amount of effort into each of my videos, and every subscriber encourages me to continue exploring topics like these. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.